welcome back to my channel, Running Wild. I'm Coach Sandy Nightpaver of SageRunning.com, and I thought I'd just do a little informal training talk. I've heard a lot of people discussing how road speed applies to men running lately, and I'll start with short distance men running. Um, a lot of people have been using the example of runners Joseph Gray and Grayson Murphy, and they're both U.S. runners, come from a road track background, and they both recently crushed the World Mountain Running Championships. Both winning gold in that event um, against athletes from around the world. And so a lot of people are saying, you know, they have a lot of road speed and that really helped them for the mountain, mountain running. Now, given I believe it was only like a 10K race and I think that's a very important factor. Um, but first, I think it is important to say and, and note that both these athletes, yeah, they do a lot of road and track workouts, especially and probably like this time of year in the winter when the trails aren't as accessible. Um, and then when you get closer to mountain running races, they did do some specific training. They did um, different hill workouts and definitely spent some time getting in some race specific climbs. And one thing I do believe is also important to add is that terrain matters. You know, I know the typical US courses and the world courses, you know, there's definitely some technical sections, but compared to other races, they're still very very runnable. And so we're giving, and people are also um, talking about these two examples and thinking this applies to everyone. Well, that I wouldn't say that's true. I think it's very dependent on your running form and how efficient you are of running uphill and downhill. There's definitely some uh, fearless needed in the downhill and some good running, um, good running form there. So uh, there are definitely other examples of really good track and road runners doing these short mountain races and not doing as well. Uh, they just either like they're not as good on the terrain or they're just not as efficient as running up or downhill. But um, since we talked about shorter mountain races, I do think it is more interesting as we go on up into longer distances. Um, and this is because we talked about terrain, which is definitely plays a huge factor in longer mountain races and the stress of the downhills. So I think Part of doing short mountain distance races is just being really fit and having that good cardiovascular system. But when you're doing a long mountain ultra, let's just look at something like the Speedgoat 50K. If you're looking at the top runners, they're going fast on that first downhill. Uh, now, given it's not top speed, they're probably holding back a little bit. But an onlooker would say like, hey, they're flying down that hill. and after that, their legs have to be able to handle that downhill stress so then they can hit the next big climb and still be able to run early, smooth, really efficiently and fast. So that downhill stress really, really matters. And I also, um, there's also plenty, I won't call anybody out, but there's plenty of good examples of speed goat of pretty good marathon runners who totally imploded on that course. And I think a big part of it is that their legs just weren't ready to handle all the stress that mountain running can take. And of course, altitude is a factor too for, for a lot of mountain races. And, and then again, just like the variable of terrain, like some people just don't move very well over rocky or uneven surfaces. So as, as just anybody watching this video who's actually trying to get information on how to get better at these dis different types of races, um, I do think it's always good to do some of your runs on the road and do some workouts, even um, if you are doing a longer mountain race. It's, and that's because from what I've seen from myself and even the athletes I coach is that it's really easy to get sloppy if you're doing all of your runs on hilly trails or, or mountainous terrain. And then you're just beating up your legs day after day. Now your legs do get stronger and more able to handle that, but it's always good to go back and do flatter runs. Just work on running mechanics and just give your legs a break from um, going over hills and um, I will say you could probably get away with a lot more road running during with shorter races but of course add at least a couple days of very specific um, runs or workouts uh, compared to the race that you're actually doing and then as you go up the more important is to really get make sure your legs are able to handle that downhill stress so you you can hit a big downhill, then again, move pretty fast up the next climb. And you don't want to overdo it with the mountain running, but that specificity really matters a lot. 
so that was, I believe I, hopefully I covered the bases there. I think that was it for this little training talk. Um, I will say that uh, Sage and I, we just opened up our first any surface, any distance team. Um, so you'll have access to me and Sage uh, to answer your questions. It is personalized advice. You can ask me any questions you want. And if you know me, I'm very thorough with my answers. And if you ask me a question, I'm probably gonna ask you five more to really dig deep and, and get to the root of, of the answer. So just wanted to mention that if you want to see more videos like this, uh, let me know what you want me to talk about. I will try to do more in 2020. <laughs> we'll see if, see if it goes, but you know, people like this video and say you want more and give me ideas. Um, that will definitely encourage me to do more. So yeah, if you like this channel, subscribe. Um, you can look for more information on mine and Sage's website, sagering.com, including training plans and free training plans, including um, a mountain ultra plan so very specific to this talk and i'm not going to ramble anymore thank you so much for watching until next time keep running wild